Hello and welcome to this round 11 here at Grand Prix Liverpool. We're going to get a chance to see two of the highest rated players in the room. There are no teams here that are on perfect records, but we're going to get a chance to see two at the very top of the standings. Niels Moller, Piotr Glagowski and Joao Chosa against Andre Strasky, Alexander Hayne and Jason Chung. And this matchup is going to be very interesting, Frank Carsten. We have a dredge deck that is aiming to win the game by putting lots of its cards into the graveyard and doing cool things with it against a mill deck that's aiming to win the game by putting lots of its opponent's cards in their graveyard and then winning. Yeah, so this uh, is going to be very interesting to, uh, to watch. I can't wait to see how this plays out because, yeah, as you mentioned, the dredge deck uh, has a bunch of discard and draw effects along with creatures like Priced Amalgam, Narcamoeba, Bloodgas that can return to the battlefield from the graveyard without having to invest any mana. Uh, but this, uh, this mill deck being played by New Zealand's Jason Chung well, it aims to uh, kill the opponent by, uh, by decking. And that comes with kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, on the one hand, yeah, you don't really want to be playing Glimpse the Unthinkable and just mill over Narcomoeba, cre Creeping Chill, and just give the opponent an advantage for free. Uh, on the other hand, the mill deck also runs in the main deck cards like Surgical Extraction or uh, Crypt Incursion that seem to be pretty pretty good in this, uh, in this matchup. So even though the the win condition of the mill deck is, well, something that the dredge player is happy to see. Those main deck exile effects could uh, prove to be ridiculously powerful too. And in terms of the mill deck winning, if you try and draw a card when you've got no cards left in your deck, you lose mm -hmm. the game. So in principle, if Jason Chung can hold off on a lot of his mill effects until a critical moment, he could kind of push Joao over the edge a little bit. So it's almost like... I liken it a little bit to the matchup between a burn deck and a death shadow deck. Both of them are attacking the same life total, and it's not abundantly clear in the mid game who that favours. But at some point in the late game, it may end up being that the deck, the mill deck, might be able to take advantage better if Joao ends up dredging too much. Yeah, I think that's a very apt uh, description. Even that uh, the Cheldock Isle, which now has a card hiding under it that you can play whenever library size is. Uh, full down to 20 or, uh, or less. Well, even if Jason wouldn't cast a single spell this game, the dredge deck is uh, capable of uh, reducing its library size down to 20 or, uh, or less relatively uh, quickly. So, uh, Faithless looting here. Joao, not quite enough dredges in the graveyard that he was able to dredge twice, but he's got a prized amalgam in there now. Um, he's already had Narcomoeba. He gets to discard Bloodgast and oh. prized amalgam. So there's going to be a lot of creatures coming back here. He's played a land to trigger his Bloodgast. So that's uh, on the stack. No surgical extraction in response, it looks like. All right, so Joao has been able to get lots of creatures into play. Now, this is... In some respects, the straightforward way that Dredge might just win this game is if he just rides the creature that he already has now in play to victory. If he's able to just get in for, what's that, nine, and then nine again is probably going to be enough that he's... I mean, he's got a, a conflagrate in the graveyard for the, the final point or two. Um, that's how he ends up just straightforwardly beating Mill. But ensnaring Bridge here from Jason Chung could make that difficult. Right now he's got well, five, five cards. cards in hand, but if he can drop down to... Uh, a low number of cards in hand, all of a sudden it's going to be very rough for the dredge deck to get the damage it needs to through, though Creeping Chill does help with that. Yeah, and I, I do fear that this uh, bridge is going to be too slow. Um, as you already mentioned, the creatures on the battlefield plus the conflagrate in the graveyard, that is already a two-turn uh, clock, and Chang will have to uh, get four cards out of his hand on the next turn uh, to be able to make sure that the prized amalgams won't be able to attack. And that's a lot of cards. Not sure uh, Jason will be able to, uh, to manage that. Yeah, I'm one card I spotted that's already in his hand is Visions from Beyond. Another one is uh, an Archive Trap. And neither of those are really spells that I would imagine Jason will be too excited about casting just yet. Archive Trap with that Scalding Tarn in play might be easy to cast for free, but do we really want to mill the dredge deck for 13 that seems like something that just favors dredge <laughs> yeah well here's a couple uh, creeping chills uh, for free um I, I do see a mission briefing in jason's hand which is a new addition from guilds of ravnica uh it did put the deck a bit more on the map because it allows you to cast any card from your graveyard and unlike snapcaster mage it means that you can pay alternative costs like the zero mana on archive trap that is a pretty sweet interaction but uh right now uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get the life totals updated uh, soon enough. I believe Jason should be down to uh, 10 life 
at this point. Uh, yeah, six cards in hand. He has to uh, go down to two cards to make sure that the Amalgams won't be able to attack, and that will be uh, will be difficult. All right, so you don't <laughs> see this too often. Uh, this is himself. Jason Chung using Glimpse <laughs> the Unthinkable, targeting himself because he <laughs> would. That's great. He needs to get it out of his hand. He really doesn't want to give <laughs> the Dredge deck essentially ten more cards to play with. Crypt Incursion there going into the graveyard. Now this is interesting because this means that if it is that Joao can't win this very next turn, then Mission Briefing into Crypt Incursion potentially could set something up here, um, depending on how uh, stocked Joao's graveyard ends up being. Right now, there's no creatures in it, so it wouldn't even help him that much. But if we're looking for tiny, minuscule outs that Jason might have, that might get in there. But this, this looks to be pretty deterministic almost with the conflagrates in the graveyard here. Yeah, and I think uh, Zhao knows about the presence of uh, Archive Trap, at least in Jason's deck, which is why he chose not to sacrifice a Scalding Tarn, uh, not search through his deck, not shuffle it so that the Archive Trap's zero mana alternative cost is not turned on. So Jason here plays Mission Briefing, potentially on a hiding to nothing here. Scoops up his cards. That is enough for the Dredge Dex Cape Game 1. Uh, for Jason Chung, small consolation is that Alexander Hain has already picked up his Game 1, uh, his Hardened Scales deck, against Piotr Glagowski's Kraklan Ironworks, doing good work. So it's currently between these two teams. They've each got one Game 1. Uh, Niels Moller on blue-white control against Andrei Strasky's Spirits. Unsurprisingly, as has been the story of much of the tournament, Niels Moller, the one who's slowest to get to uh, game two. <laughs> Though it looks like even they are shuffling yeah. up now, so we'll just get our update on the scoreboards there. The reason that right now you're not watching any magic is because every single one of these tables shuffling up, and it's Andre Strasky that picked up the game one win there. So the team of Chung, Hain, and Strasky currently nominally slightly ahead in order to win a full uh, match here in a, one of these team rounds. You need to have two of your players winning their individual matches. That's enough to win the round for your team. Yeah, and these are two of the more experienced teams in the, in the room, uh, right? Uh, Andre Strasky won uh, a GP just uh, a couple of months ago with Banned Spirits in Modern. Alexander Hain, one of the better players from, uh, from Canada, piloting uh, hardened skills uh, today. And yeah, Jason Chung coming all the way over from uh, New Zealand. Apparently he even uh, flew in uh, and arrived on Saturday morning. Arrived here at the venue at around like 8.56 just four minutes before the start of uh, round one, Come on, uh, coming off of some ridiculous 37-hour flight. But uh, hey, he had managed to uh, catch some sleep on the flight, uh, was really confident in his mill deck, and in fact he had been uh, winning most of his uh, matches yesterday, showing off the power of uh, Glimpse the Unthinkable and uh, an Archive Trap. So uh, it's a nice international alliance. Uh, but the team on the left, also uh, definitely uh, a good one. We have uh, Niels Moller, previously uh, an England national uh, champion, right now living in the Netherlands uh, again. Piotr Glogowski, one of the more experienced players from, uh, from Poland and well known uh, for playing Korklen Arenworks, uh, also known as Canister on, uh, on Twitch. And well, we also have uh, Chosa. Actually, both Glogowski and Chosa made the top eight of the most recent GP in uh, in Atlanta in a modern format, both playing KCI. Well, <laughs> given that it's teams, only one of them uh, could sleeve up uh, the deck, and that uh, honor fell to uh, to Piotr this time. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I think that the fact that this team tournament has come exactly one weekend before the World Magic Cup, and while obviously it's not like we're next door neighbors to to Spain, but we're not that far from Spain in a global sense. It's on uh, the same continent. We we have. A whole host of people have traveled in this weekend, in part because they know they're going to be playing the World Magic Cup next weekend and they maybe mm -hmm. want to meet up with their team, get a, get a little bit of magic in, even if it's not quite the same formats, and, and you know, just generally enjoy the, enjoy the fact that they'll be able to play in that event, maybe getting over a little bit of jet lag before having to worry about that sort of thing. Yeah, so don't miss, uh, miss that. starts uh, this Friday uh, at, well, I assume uh, early in the morning. Barcelona time also streamed live on uh, on Twitch. It's and gonna be fun. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be talking up a storm about all of the World Magic Cup. It's always a fun tournament. One where you have uh, teams coming from all over the world vying for success, and some of the big team players 
that we would expect to see ending up in our feature match area as well here. I know that Alex Hayne has been the captain of Team Canada on a couple of occasions. Uh, would not surprise me at all if we saw a large proportion of uh, the players that we're anticipating seeing doing well at the World Magic Cup also doing well this weekend. Cream rising to the top in these tournaments. Yeah, and this already gives uh, many of the players uh, a bit of preparation in, in uh, team spirit. You know, getting again uh, together with... Uh, uh, playing next to other players, knowing w when to uh, give advice to uh, to your teammates, when uh, when not to, and of course supporting each other is uh, very important. It's also nice to see the players uh, smiling here, uh, having a good time, especially with this weird matchup of Dredge versus uh, versus Mill. That is uh, such a, uh, <laughs> as we explained, an awesome well, uh, conflagration of uh, of game plans that uh, you know uh, support each other somehow. Yeah, I mean, looking at the sideboarding, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Jason Chung cut a bunch of his mill cards for more mm -hmm. cards that interact with the graveyard. So, he, in addition to having a fair amount of copies of um, Surgical Extraction, he also has access to Extirpate. And just having a bunch of Surgical Extractions, a bunch of Extirpates, um, a whole bunch of just removal spells and so on, and then saying, <laughs> I don't really need a Hedron Crab because Hedron Crab it's helping you more than it's helping me, probably. Um, like, normally your archive traps are good, but on, on this occasion, maybe not quite so much. It's, it's an interesting one. In the meantime, while those guys are finishing their shoveling and mulligans, though, we're going to get a little bit of a look in on how things are going on at uh, our middle table. Piotr Golgowski lost game one with his Krat Clan Ironworks deck. This time around, it doesn't look like Alexander Hain has the crazy fast start from, uh, from the Hardened Scales list. He doesn't have a Hardened Scales yet, but Arcbound Ravager and Arcbound Worker certainly do good things working together here and we can see a nature's claim on a welding jar happening here before the Arcbound Ravager comes down so the welding jar can't simply get sacrificed. Indeed. Uh, or not, no. for, not for value anyway. Exactly. Now between that Arcbound Ravager uh, and the Inkmont Nexus, Alexander Hain might easily be able to set up uh, a two-turn Infect Clock. Perhaps if he finds uh, a hardened skills on the next turn uh, could even uh, represent an attack with a 10-10 or 11 11 ink mod nexus uh, right away that is uh, i mean it, it may not look like much at the moment those four permanents but uh, it can get out of hand pretty quickly now glogowski in the meantime is just doing what uh Karklin ironworks uh, generally does in the early turns just play out a whole bunch of uh, artifacts uh, draw some cards dig deeper into your deck until you eventually find uh, the key card of the deck Karklin ironworks which allows you to sacrifice any artifact for uh, for two mana. Well, any of these artifacts, when they would die, give some additional value, drawing additional cards, and eventually the combo is to assemble uh, scrap trawler, utilize the death triggers, and then uh, loop some mirror retrievers and pirate spell bombs. But here is hardened skills. So the combo so on the other side of things, in some respects, is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, we have an arcbound ravager in play. Every time you sacrifice an artifact to it, normally it would get one plus one plus one counter. Now it's getting two plus one plus one counters. It's got modular. When it dies, it will be adding however many counters it has plus one to something else. Ink Moth Nexus, if it de is dealing poison counters equal to damage, if you get to throw a whole bunch of counters on it with your Arcbound Ravager, you can end games incredibly quickly. I'm, I'm counting a 9-9 nine, nine, uh, Ink Moth Nexus potential, but you can sacrifice Arcbound Worker to Arcbound Ravager. Uh, and then put a modular counter on the Ravager as well, uh, which thanks to Hardened Skills would turn into a 5 5 Ravager. Then Dark Soul Citadel would make it a 7 7, then sacrifice it to itself, 8 counters over to the Nexus. But, uh, well, Nature's Claim has uh, some other things to say about that, at least in response to the Hardened Skills. So that even if Hain sacrifices a bunch of artifacts uh, in response and maybe uh, makes a big um, uh, Inkmod Nexus. At least he doesn't have the benefit of uh, hardened skills uh, while doing so yet. Yeah, this is looking a little bit tricky. Uh, I do kind of want to see a little bit more about how this match between uh, Dredge and Mill goes, just because it's such an unusual round of magic. So we are going to jump back to that one as it's now kicking off. Early visions from beyond here from Jason Chung. And I'm, basically, I feel like a lot of how this game two go is going to go, I'm intrigued as to what Chung is going to do here, because... I suspect that we're going to see all of the sort of non-mill cards in his deck really coming mm -hmm. to the fore here. 
I mean, game one was already uh, wacky enough with uh, Jason casting Glimpse the Unthinkable on himself uh, just to be able to uh, get cards out of his hand for Ensnaring Bridge. When are you ever going to see, uh, see that kind of nonsense? And it might well be that almost 15 cards from Jason's sideboard come in and things like Glimpse the Unthinkable, Archive Trap and so on, not quite as big a deal all of a sudden. Yep, could easily, uh, could easily be. I, I wouldn't be surprised to uh, see Jason morph more into a uh, kind of a control deck uh, this game. But a control deck with lots of cards that are specifically very good against the sorts of things that Dredge tries to do. Yeah. Life from the Loam here. Picking up just a single card from uh, Chosa's graveyard there, a single land. The important thing, though, is it's a Dredge 3 card that's in the graveyard now, meaning that for Chosa, he will be able to get a whole bunch of cards into that graveyard. Sheldark Isle, four cards, he gets to look at them. There's only one spell, so that's going to be the one that gets hidden away. Once there are only 20 or fewer cards left in one player's deck, uh, you can use that Sheldark Isle, pay a blue and tap it to be able to cast the spell under it for free. So it will be a nice way of him dealing with what's going on in Joao's graveyard. And it looked like uh, there was a surgical extraction hidden under the Sheldark Isle. So Nakamiba coming back as it gets dredged through. Nakamiba, it got reprinted in uh, Guilds of Ravnica, but that the original printing from Future Sight. And you also see uh, Oboro Palace in the Clouds there for, uh, for Jason Chung. It's uh, kind of an island, uh, except you can uh, pay a mana to return it uh, back to your hand. That makes for a nice combo with uh, Hedron Crab, uh, a creature that uh, mills the opponent whenever a land enters the battlefield uh, under your control. Nice little synergy there. All right, so let's see what the follow-up here is. We got Life from the Loam to get back those two lands. As Chosa said, it's like Divination for two. Couple of dredges in the graveyard. But for now, at least, he's not presenting so scary a clock on what uh, Jason Chung's working with. Chung with two copies of Ensnaring Bridge in hand here. Yeah, so you have to imagine that uh, one of them is going to come down if he has a land uh, that is. But uh, it's also likely that uh, Chosa boarded in at least some copies of Ancient Grudge to have some answers uh, and outs to the, uh, to the Ensnaring Bridge in his deck. There's all sorts of fun stuff in Jason's deck here after sideboarding. He's now got an Echoing Truth in hand. An Echoing Truth against Narcomoeba is just a virtual doom blade because there are so few ways that uh, jo Ch Joao Chosa has to be able to cast a blue spell in his deck. I do believe that he's got a Steam Vent uh, that will mean that he can make blue mana, but... It's, it's something that, by and large, he's going to have to do a bit of work to actually find blue mana. And he also has a, a gemstone mine. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, blue is not what the dredge deck is trying to cast. So Visions uh, of Beyond, you generally try to uh, use it as kind of an ancestral recall. One blue mana, draw three cards. But uh, for that, you do need well, a bunch of cards in uh, in the graveyard, and right now it's just drawing one card and no lands for Jason Chung, meaning he actually has to discard down to hand size. That is unfortunate, and no black mana either for Jason Chung, which could prove problematic. Meanwhile, Chosa he gets to dredge Golgari Thug, gets a few more cards in the graveyard, two dredges in there now between Dakmore Salvage and Life from the Loam, so he will be able to fill up his graveyard to some extent, though. It wouldn't surprise me at all if, if Drow kind of sniffs out a little bit about what Jason's doing here and doesn't go too overboard about loading his graveyard if he can help it, maybe picking some of the smaller dredges rather than the really large ones, assuming he's got a little bit of a clock on the table. Mm. Yeah, I would also be uh, um, trying not to use too many fetch lands uh, if, I can, uh, if I could help it, because before you know it, there's a whole bunch of archive traps uh, coming down to mill your entire library. Golgari Thug getting cast there. The rare additional ability on Golgari Thug. Um, when it dies, you get to put a creature from your graveyard on top of your library. Uh, it's also just you know a regular body that can apply a small amount of beat down. A two mana, one one. It's not going to kill anyone quickly, but it's not as if Jason Chung is presenting a gigantic clock here. Drow can maybe play it a little slower than he might do in some other matchups if he so chooses. Yeah, Golgari Thug beat down. That's... Uh <laughs> not, not, definitely not plan A for, uh, for the dredge deck. Not even close to plan B. But, uh, well, you got to do what uh, you got to do if you 
want to uh, beat a mill deck. Jason Chung having to discard again. This another sideboard card that came in. Murderous Cut. No black mana, not able to cast that one. Ooh, Bloodgast. And now also two priced uh, Emelgems uh, in the graveyard. They work rather um, nicely together. Now that, that does pre represent uh, a reasonable clock. And Chosa almost surely has uh, a land in hand from all those life uh, from the loams. Now, if Surgical Extraction is in hand for Jason Chung, he will be able to cast that even though he doesn't have black mana, just paying the Phyrexian mana cost and could potentially snipe away two copies of Prized Amalgam. Often for these dredge decks, if they end up without a Prized Amalgam, the amount of attacking that they can really get going really does drop off fairly fast. Yep. That does seem to be uh, a prime target. It is, it is so silly to see this uh, Golgari Tuck beat down with uh, like a 2 mana 1-1 one, one with an ability that is almost surely not going to matter in this matchup where creatures are unlikely to die. Would be bad and limited, let alone modern. Yeah, there's, there's a number of decks in this modern format that use cards that are not necessarily things that would make your main deck in a draft, but that have very specific niche roles. I mean, when I think about the Croc Clan Ironworks deck, Chromatic Spheres, Chromatic Stars, not exciting. Like your um, Ica Wellsprings, far from first pickable. And yet, somehow or other, these cards all work together to create something really rather special in Constructed. So land has uh, entered the battlefield, which means that there is a blood gas uh, trigger. And it looks like uh, Jason is uh, looking over his, uh, his options. Um, if he has Surgical Extraction, then uh, yeah, he might want to uh, exile the Bloodgast. And then maybe um, you know, he, he also has uh, Echoing Truth, which is uh, a good answer to the, to the priced uh, Amalgams, given that uh, Chosa doesn't have uh, a blue land in play yet. Sure, he has the Arid Misa, which might fetch for a blue source in Steam Vents. But then Chosa has to look through his library, which might turn on the, the Archive Traps. Oh, this is uh, this is nice. Uh, <laughs> due due to hand size, Chosa has to discard uh, an amalgam, which is uh, probably beneficial for him uh, more than anything. Certainly beneficial. Mm -hmm. Now, I, one thing I want to double check with you, Frank, in terms of what to target uh, any kind of surgical extractions on. When you play an arid mesa to get back that blood gust, could you respond to a uh, surgical Extraction by cracking that Arid Mesa to get a second Blood Gas trigger to get it onto the battlefield before the Surgical Extraction resolved? Yes. Sweet. That would work. I, I figured out a play. I get to feel smart. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not extirpate. That one has uh, split second. <laughs> this is Jason Chung very carefully checking how many cards are left in Zhuo's deck when there are clearly a lot. We're not going to worry about the count for now, but I can tell you right now, Shelter Kyle not yet active. No. It's closer to 40-ish uh, uh, cards, I would say. Sheldock Isle, much more powerful in Limited than in Constructed, and if you're ever doing a cube draft, it is worthy of a relatively high pick, because obviously it's counting how many cards are left in people's decks. When you start with 40 cards in your deck, much <laughs> easier to get to 20, even if you're not doing any kind of milling. Yep. Whereas this card is probably not as potent in, uh, in a commander game. True fact coming from Dr. Frank Carsten as we do see that uh, fetch land being used to fetch out a steam vents. This does now mean that Archive Trap is active. Also means that there's um, the potential to actually cast blue spells from hand now. Like a priced amalgam. I mean, I guess that given that Jason knows that he has a way of removing cards from the graveyard under that Sheldock Isle. If he had enough Archive Traps here, Archive Trap might still look pretty attractive. I guess th there's those creeping chills though. This is such a strange matchup. Yeah, no creeping chills have been uh, revealed yet, so it's, it's likely that there are still four left in uh, Chosa's deck, which means if you, uh, even if you would mill over the entirety of uh, Chosa's deck at this point, which is obviously not easy to do. Um, yeah, you do uh, potentially just take uh, uh, take twelve. Although you can respond to the to the trigger of uh, creeping chill by uh, by exiling it with uh, surgical extraction, and then you know like uh, the trigger looks and says, well, 
can't really exile it anymore. It's already gone. So then uh, the drain wouldn't uh, wouldn't happen, I believe. Okay, so life from the loam here from Chosa, just keeping those wheels a spinning. And this will mean that again Chosa is going to be discarding to hand size. Both of these players discarding to hand size. I must f I must say that I feel like this is working better for Joao than it is for Jason in this instance. A couple of JCs opposite each other. I mean, the deck with Ensnaring Bridge was not planning to uh, discard to hand size, I can tell you that much. Yeah, un an unfortunate set of draws here for Jason Chung. Uh, Creeping Chill and Golgari Thug alongside Stinkweed Imp getting dredged here. Right, so first you need to resolve the entirety of Fateless Lootings before triggers would go onto the stack. means discarding two cards to complete the resolution of Fatal's Looting. Yep. Okay, so this is a good moment for uh, some responses from Jason Chung, and indeed he does have a copy of Surgical Extraction. He's going to be able to remove something. He's going for those Creeping Chills. And revealing a hand with a bunch of uh, lands, life from the loams. So because Creeping Chill checks, uh, well, if you do exile it, uh, Drain Tree, I do believe that uh, the Drain is not going to uh, happen anymore now. And Jason, having a good old look through uh, Drow's deck here, this is one of the advantages afforded to the players that are using uh, Surgical Extraction. They get to look through the entire deck and take in what's going on there. In this case, this will be Jason figuring out, all right, what are the threats in the deck? What are the answers that Drow might have after sideboarding? And in the most basic terms, how many cards are left in this deck? Because ultimately, getting rid of all of them is going to be the way that uh, Jason Chung is able to win this game. 26 cards left in the deck. And also important uh, for Jason to know is that uh, there are two Ancient Grudges uh, in there. It's going to be relevant for the next game because two Archive Traps, given that Chosa searched through his library uh, this turn, are going to be cast for free, milling over the entirety of uh, Chosa's deck. And, well, next time Chosa would go to draw a card, he's going to lose the game. There are actually 27, but as it turns ah. out, Surgical Extraction will be able to remove whatever is going on there so that there's ultimately not enough. I, th I think that uh, they double-checked the number before the Archive Traps resolved. They went, oh, there's 27, and Jason said, well, great, before these resolve, this I'm going to remove something that I know you have more copies of. This is just uh, complete madness. Jason Chung was stalled on two lands for the entirety of the game. Uh, no black mana at any point. He didn't do anything of relevance most of, uh, most of his turns. And then in one go, it's like surgical extraction, double archive trap. I win. Yeah, I mean, it uh, must uh, be said uh, that... Chosa should probably not have uh, cracked his uh, fetch land. Uh, that uh, that definitely uh, came back to uh, to bite him, but uh, wow, this this mill deck it can just uh, win out of, out of out of nowhere. Now I just want to point out that on each and every other table the score is one one as well. We've got three sets of game threes going on here. We're looking in on Niels Muller against Andre Straski. They were the first table to get to two to to two wins, one apiece, um, and here we have. Niels, who had a, a relatively quick win with his blue-white control deck in game two, facing down a Supreme Phantom and a Drog Skull Captain here. So a relatively large amount of attacking going on from Andre Straski. Six points of damage left to deal, and it's not going to take him too long to do it if he's able to resolve this collected company. Looks like Niels might have something to say about that one. A Cryptic Command, Counter and Bounce looks to be the modes that he's picking there. Yeah, often you want to just uh, counter and draw with Cryptic Command, but not when you are at uh, 6 life and uh, facing down a potentially lethal, uh, lethal attack. But uh, Strasky's still very much in the, in the driver's seat uh, here. He has uh, the pressure on the table and lots of uh, disruptive cards in hand. I think I see um, a Spell Queller that can uh, deal with some of uh, Mola's spells, as well as a Unified Will which can act as uh, some counter magic. Yeah, I think I like 
uh, making a selfless spirit and passing with a couple of mana up here to be able to counter whatever it is that Niels has going on. I He's agree. not going to be able to win in one turn, so you might as well set up a nice clean way of winning in two. Yeah, it's going to be mana efficient. Uh, and now you have uh, well, a two-turn clock. Effectively even a one-turn clock if uh, Molo would have to use a fetch land or, uh, or a shock jewel. And that unified will is going to uh, be quite valuable. A slightly risky counter spell in some respects, not one that's always active for every deck, but given that this tribal deck is aiming to get creatures in play, especially against the likes of a control list, a very efficient answer to a lot of what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Counter target spell for just a single blue mana in the cost there, two mana in total. Yes, it requires you to have creatures in play, but how many creatures is this blue-white control deck ever really going to have around? One of the things that uh, Andre has to worry about is the potential of a mirror called uh, Terminus, which uh, could come from the top of the deck, even uh, just drawing it off of an, uh, an opt and then be cast for a single white mana. It would sweep the board, and not even self to spirit would be uh, capable of protecting Andre's creatures, because Terminus just puts the creatures on the bottom of uh, the libraries. So Niels here, in a rough spot, having to have a little think about how he's going to get out of this one. Potential that he might ask his teammates for some uh, advice, but you know what? They're all in busy game threes as well, so I can't imagine that he would be getting too terribly much input from the other two guys on his team. Well, we're also currently in, uh, in Andre's uh, turn, I believe, in his main phase. He has the option of playing uh, Drogskull Captain, uh, and if Mola would have literally nothing in hand, that uh, would turn his uh, attack into a lethal one. But uh, it does seem dangerous to uh, cast it, leaving your shields down without Spell Queller or Unified Will Mana. A little bit of a staring contest going on. Once the shuffling has gone on with, between Drow Chosa and Jason Chung, I think we are probably going to get a little bit more of a look in on that one. I'm just really intrigued to see how that plays. Right now, they're still figuring out the details of sideboarding. Obviously, it's a bit of an intricate dance that those two are doing in, in lockstep uh, in terms of what they're trying to do. Uh, but ultimately, it's gone each way once thus far. Okay, it's not going to be uh, long before uh, chat will be asking, uh, hey, uh, wh whose turn is it? Which year is this? And that's a sign that someone does have to make a play. So, little attacks going on here from uh, Strasky. And I, I believe that we're going to get a chance to go back to Chosa and Chung. We will, of course, bring you the results of that match. Uh, but realistically, if it's going to be ending soon, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be ending soon with Andre Strasky winning through Really, relatively straightforward spirit beatdown. On the other side of things here, Drow Chosa, the turn, the turn one Shriekhorn netting him a Nark Amoeba and a Dredger uh, for the first turn. This is a lovely start for the Dredge deck, assuming that putting lots of cards in your graveyard is a good thing in this matchup, which I don't know if we can assume that. This is really, <laughs> it's a really, <laughs> yeah. really strange I mean, state of affairs. On the one hand it is, because that is how the Dredge deck wins. On the other hand, it isn't, because that is how the Mill deck wins. All, all that we know is that this is a winning line. We just don't know who it's a winning line <laughs> for. <laughs> Two Narcomevers in play there. One little tidbit that, depending on how high a resolution TV you're watching this on, I love on the new Narcomever artwork is the little guy and his cat just fishing off the edge of a tower in the background. Uh, this is the original artwork from Future Sight that you see on screen at the moment. But a faithless looting means that Joao's saying, I'm not going to win by not getting cards into my graveyard. Let's do this. Uh, Dredge is a Stinkweed Imp. Two, three, three wow. Creeping Chills. Well, is there a Surgical Extraction? If there's a Surgical Extraction, this is or great. Or paid. Uh, you first have to resolve the Fadeless Looting uh, in full, of course. And then two discards. I'm guessing it's going to be the two Dredges that were just picked up, roughly speaking. Seems likely. A few decisions even to be made in that account, though. If, if you're wary of your dredges getting extirpated, maybe two of the same is mm -hmm. better keeping something else around. I'm not sure. All right. Action from Jason Chung's side of things. Extirpate on Crippling Chill. No chills. Nope. So... 
Jason Chung gets to have a little brief sneaky peek at Chosa's hand, sees a couple of Golgari thugs alongside a cathartic reunion. So there will be the potential for a lot more dredging from Chosa in future turns. But if it works out that Jason Chung can just snipe the key cards from uh, Chosa's graveyard at the right moment, then he could do exactly what he did in game two and just, just take this by running the dredge deck out of threats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, uh, if Jason is able to, uh, well, first take out these uh, creeping chills and then maybe also have, uh, say, surgical extraction for, uh, for blood ghasts, um, it's going uh, to be hard for uh, Chosa to, uh, to win. Maybe he can then combine two of the remaining Narcomibas from his deck with some priced uh, amalgams, but... Um, yeah, these uh, these extirpates and surgical extractions in particular are uh, proving key in this uh, in this matchup. And based on the lands that uh, Joao currently has to work with, he may not be able to escape having to sacrifice a fetch land at some point. Okay, but now uh, this uh, surgical extraction not going to uh, prevent the blood guest from entering the battlefield uh, because if Chang would go to extract the blood guest at this point. Chosa would just respond with, by sacrificing the Arid Misa and getting a landfall trigger to return the Bloodgast uh, after all in response. Now, saving grace here, at least there's no copies of uh, any other creatures that are going to be coming back as a result of that Bloodgast hitting the mm -hmm. battlefield. Yeah. Well, now Chang is under, uh, let's say, a five-turn clock. Uh, let's make it a four-turn one, uh, given the presence of uh, Conflagrate. Yeah, it means that there's the potential that Joao doesn't really need to do any more dredging if he doesn't want to. At least for yeah. now. Yeah, I wouldn't dredge too aggressively uh, at this point. Like, you don't have Creeping Chill left in your deck anymore. There's still a bunch of Blood Guests, Narcomibas, and the priced uh, Amalgams that you can hit. So maybe a couple more uh, dredges is fine. Also, Ancient Grudge, that does uh, mean that if Chung finds an Ensnaring Bridge, it is uh, going to be destroyed. Yeah, Ensnaring Bridge, it's not obvious to me quite how good it's going to be in this matchup because of Ancient Grudge. Ancient Grudge will very reliably hit the graveyard and potentially in numbers, depending on how many uh, Chosa has in his deck. So, lots of cards in the graveyard and a reasonable amount of swings. This is the first moment where Jason's just double checking cards in the library. Twenty-nine, I believe. That's that's the number that I came to as well. Yeah. The other way, of course, you can figure out how many cards left in library. You can count the number of cards not in the library and do the math that way. Yeah, that is uh, a technique that is sometimes used, say, in uh, control matchups, where it just uh, counts the cards on a battlefield in your opponent's hand and in library to uh, deduce the library size without making it obvious to your opponent that you uh, might be going for a decking plan. We right actually, <laughs> I like this. We have dice on the table to indicate how many cards are left in Chosa's deck. This is very important yes. information for both of I these like players. It. And ultimately, I don't think that either of them minds it being visible because both. either of them screwing it up could work to their detriment. Yeah, both of them are uh, keenly aware that uh, the library size of uh, Chosa is what is important here. You, you might as well completely ignore his life total. Uh, Jason Chung is not going to attack uh, effectively. <laughs> yeah, effectively, the, the library size functions as the, the life total. And yeah, I, mean, I certainly see some mill players that literally on their score pad will be keeping track of the number of cards left in their opponent's <laughs> deck. It's like starting with 53. Oh, you draw a card, 52. <laughs> yeah, you've got that hundred yeah. of infinite rage in play for your opponent's uh, cards in uh, deck total. Chung not needing to do anything on his turn. Now, if you're Drow here, do you just draw a card? I mean, it is getting uh, somewhat dangerous. Uh, if you keep dredging, then you might just die to uh, double glimpse the unthinkable. I mean, one, one card that could be a big deal for uh, Jason Chung is if he's got Archive Trap, Field of Ruin to force the uh, 
the shuffling of the deck, meaning that uh, the archive trap will be able to be cast for zero. Mm -hmm. Here's a surgical extraction. Yeah, those uh, priced amalgams are likely going to uh, go away. Although, wait, is there a point in doing that already? I mean, it, it, like, Conflagrate's also a card that's worth yeah. thinking about because this is one of the cards that gives reach to the deck immediately. Mm -hmm. And worth bearing in mind sense. as well that Mission Briefing will work perfectly well on Surgical Extraction too. We, we've been talking about it as a way of casting um, Archive Trap again and again and again. But if you, if you Mission Briefing to recast your Surgical Extraction, at some point you really can reliably consider running your opponent out of threats. Yep. Yeah, another example of... Uh you know, where you can cast the card this turn, thereby pay alternative costs like uh, the Fraction Mana. That is a very sweet interaction. Yeah, I'm liking Mission Briefing in this deck quite a lot. I think this is... I've, be, I've been looking for a new deck to play in Modern, and I think that Jason Chung might have helped me out a little bit on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it does something completely different from uh, the rest of the decks in the format, and I, I do like uh, that aspect. Worth noting, we jumped away from Niels Muller versus Andrei Strasky with Strasky looking ahead on the board. That did persist. He was able to get the beatdown win. So Strasky, the first winner of this uh, series, of the team of Strasky, Hain and Chung versus Muller, and Chosa. Uh, the guys on the left, they were the, the final remaining undefeated teams. Their tiebreakers, excellent. Both these teams at 9 and 1. Shriekhorn putting more cards in the graveyard here for Chosa. There's a Bloodgast. So now we might see some action in terms of uh, getting rid of the prized amalgams because prized amalgam becomes a lot scarier now. Maybe it should be 23, actually. Not sure they counted the conflag rate that was exiled from the library, I believe. But I'm not 100% on that. Life from the loam to get back some lands here. No conflag rates anymore, but having lands will be useful to at least make sure that that blood gas can come back without having to activate uh, Arid Mesa. Mm-hmm. I guess that surgical extraction is another way of getting your opponent shuffling their deck for your archive trap, right? Uh, or, is it, or is it when they search? I can't quite recall. So archive trap says if an opponent searched his or her library ah, okay. this turn. Uh, so it's not shuffle, it's, uh, it's search. But field of ruin does work with archive trap, which another important interaction yep. which helps push that deck ahead. And here is the field of ruin. Oh, Knight wow. of Souls Betrayal. This is a huge addition to Jason Chung's side of the battlefield. It's just a one-off in his sideboard, but uh, oh boy, is it, uh, is it good here. It means that all the Narcomibas, all the blood guests from the entire dredge deck are now yeah, just not going to do anything anymore. Priced Amalgams turn into uh, two twos. So suddenly the, the assault of the dredge deck is, uh, is halted. And another thing that's important is we were in a spot before where Crypt Incursion was of some value, but the value was a little questionable because it worked out that actually a lot of the creatures in the dredge deck would simply come back onto the battlefield. Now, Narcomevers and Bloodgasts, they just sit in the graveyard waiting to get eaten by Jason Chung. Nom nom nom, lovely stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I do think they can come back uh, to the battlefield just very briefly enough to return any potential priced uh, amalgams from the graveyard, but that's all they're going to, uh, going to do. Uh, minus one, minus one to all creatures. Uh, we've seen this enchantment already do uh, uh, some amazing work against Infect yesterday, but uh, it is also pretty good against uh, against Dredge here. All right, another prized amalgam in the graveyard here. Chosa's graveyard, at this point, bigger than his deck, I believe. Around about 21 cards left mm -hmm. in the deck. We're not 100% on the count, but you know what? It's close we can, enough, see, we uh, can see the numbers uh, going yeah. down. <laughs> That's not over yet. There's uh, another uh, amalgam. Uh, so I think Chose is announcing uh, well, Bloodgast comes back uh, just for a second, dies immediately, but uh, the priced amalgam still triggers. And Chung on nine life, so it's a three turn clock. All of the burn spells in uh, Chosa's list have been removed with yep. various extraction effects. So it's going to have to be straightforward creature beatdown. There is an ensnaring bridge in hand for Chung, but there's so many copies of ancient grudge in the graveyard that I don't believe that that plan is especially reliable. Well, I guess you can mission briefing on uh, Surgical Extraction or Extirpate to get rid of the ancient grudge. 
and then uh, then cast your ensnaring bridge. Though I guess then Chosa can respond by grudging his own shriek horn to uh, effectively fizzle the effect. But if you have extirpate, then um, that has split second, so that wouldn't uh, wouldn't work. So that's uh, that's a potential plan for uh, for Jason. Mission briefing on the extirpate, get rid of the ancient grudges, and then cast uh, a snaring bridge on the next turn, so that the Christ uh, amalgams cannot attack anymore. Somewhat trickily, Jason Jung has two lands in hand as well. Getting those lands out mm. of hand in a timely fashion may prove more difficult than getting rid of all of the answers to Ensnaring Bridge. <laughs> this is such a weird matchup. An attack for four with these now 2-2 two -two prized amalgams thanks to Knight of Souls Betrayal. Using every piece of the buffalo, these guys, in terms of finding a game of magic uh, to play in this modern GP. It's also bizarre how Knight of Souls Betrayal makes Ensnaring Bridge uh, a bit worse. It's like, like some anti-synergy uh, going on. So here's the Faithless Looting. Chosa has now hit the point where he knows that if there was a double archive trap, he'd already be dead. So mm. at most he's worrying about a single archive trap. And to be fair, if Jason Chung finds one, because he's got a mission briefing and he's got Field of Ruin, he will be able to get the entirety of the rest of this library in one fell swoop. Yeah, and he did find uh, the prized Melgum that was still in his library. So that uh, effectively shaves one full turn off the clock with uh, Jason at uh, 5 life being able to attack for 4 versus attacking for 6 is a huge difference. Okay, but Field of Ruins being activated now. To me, in large part, I, this kind of suggests that we're going to see a mission briefing turn this turn and potentially Archive Trap to close things out. This is one of the things that Field of Ruin is best at. Yeah, it might be that uh, Jason wants to... Uh have that option available to him if uh, he does look at Archive Trap with his uh, surveil. Alright, so instead we're getting a mission briefing. I mean, it's it's possible he could just mill Archive Trap here. So with the, oh, sorry, put Archive Trap in with his uh, surveil. So I think that's a glimpse the unthinkable and an inquisition of Kozilek. Um, Yes, so leaving a spell on top so that there's uh, not going to be a land on top that is important. And extirpate there on Ancient Grudge. Yeah, split second, very important, so that uh, Chosa cannot respond by grudging his own Shriek Horn in response. Chung here getting a feel for what's left in the deck in terms of scary things. Not as many scary things as there were at the start of this match, that's much completely sure. And he now also looks through the library and sees that, uh, well, I believe that Chosa doesn't really have a way of uh, getting out of this uh, ensnaring bridge lock uh, that's coming up. Yeah, gradually getting down to the teens when it comes to cards left in deck. Not very much time left on this round as well, though. If we look at the clock here, these guys fast approaching the end of the round. Now, it's possible they may have had an extra minute or so just uh, around the start of the round as we were getting things set for coverage. But here we go. In Snaring Bridge, Glimpse the Unthinkable You. I have one card left in hand. You have a bunch of 2-2 two -two zombies in play. And I think this is it. Uh, Jason is never going to fall uh, to more than uh, 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 two cards uh, in hand, meaning that those prized amalgams are never going to be able to attack. Uh, and given that all the creeping chills and conflagrates have been removed from Chosa's deck, as well as all the answers to Ensnaring Bridge, um, looks to me like uh, Jason Chung has this uh, game locked up. Well, he might do, but for the sake of the amount of time left in the round. If it works out that Jason can't find any mill sources, then he may be in a spot where actually, even though he, can, he can't really lose the game, he also can't really win the game. Um, if that happens, because Piotr Glagowski's won his match against Alexander Hain, we could have an unintentional draw here. It looks like these players playing very fast, as if they've not yet been told to finish things up. There's the Archive Trap, though. That is enough to close things out. Wow! You can see the big smiles on the face of uh, the team of Hain, Strasky and Chung. That was an incredibly strange, <laughs> but kind of beautiful match that we got a chance to witness there. That was so fun I to watch. I feel privile privileged to see that one. Super fun there. Jason Chung having to do a fairly substantial pivot in terms of how his deck worked, because 
under regular circumstances, putting more cards into the graveyard of a dredge deck, very dangerous indeed, but some fantastic magic there. I enjoyed that very much indeed. I really hope that you did too. We're going to get a chance to see some more magic in the form of Time Walk magic soon enough. Do not go anywhere. There'll be more from round 11 after these messages. <laughs> 